Okay, so the time just hit seven, so let's let's get started. Um, welcome to the Ask the Expert webinar tonight. And uh, Paul Keenan, as most of you know, uh, Paul Keenan is the one who leads the webinars, um, and he's celebrating his anniversary um, tonight. So uh, he sends his regrets that he's not with us in the webinar, but we're recording it, so he will enjoy it for, for sure. So lots of exciting stuff today to cover. Um, uh, we have a, a an expert, Jess Tang, she's the Outreach Coordinator for SHAD. So she's going to talk to us about the SHAD program, which is super exciting. And um, we've been partnering with SHAD for a couple of years now. And I know that uh, many of you are familiar with the program. And uh, those of you who aren't, I'm sure you're going to uh, enjoy what Jess has to say today. And myself, uh, my name is Kim Cooper, and I'm the Vice President of Partnerships for First Canada. So I work with um, our sponsors and our, our partners to uh, raise awareness of the FIRST programs and to fundraise and do lots of exciting, exciting stuff. So today we're going to cover a few topics, and one is, of course, Shad, as I had said, in First Canada, and then we're going to talk a little bit about uh, the Equity, Diversity, and Inclusivity Badge, which is super exciting, a new initiative from First Canada. So just a reminder that if you have any questions, feel free to type them into the questions chat box, and um, I'll be sure to uh, answer them in the end there. So without further ado, I'm going to um, ask and welcome uh, Jess Tang here. And Jess, I'm just going to share the um, screen with you so that we can learn all about the SHAD program. Fantastic. Thank you so much. And hello, everyone. This is my first time on a first webinar and I'm really happy to be here. Uh, as Kim mentioned, this is our second year partnering with FIRST Robotics and uh, after such a successful first year and seeing just how aligned the two programs are, I'm really excited to be on this more about what our program can offer for FIRST students. All right, so for what SHAD is, is we are a summer enrichment program that allows exceptional youth the opportunity to spend the month of July living in one of 16 host university campuses. And so you live away from home for an entire month in a university campus and every you're doing hands-on experiential learning in science, technology, engineering, arts, math, business, entrepreneurship, and leadership. Many students have gone through our program uh, and this is a quote from one of our SHAD fellows, which is what we call our alumni. She said that the same aspects I love most about robotics, creativity, and teamwork, to name a few, are the qualities that best define my SHAD experience. In addition to the incredibly strong sense of community, I will never forget the tools SHAD gave me as I can in my current and future pursuits. Um, and so, like I said, what is SHAD? We're a registered charity, and it's an opportunity for exceptional high school students to live in residence 16 host university campuses. So I'm going to give you an overview of what the month of July at SHAD looks like. It's a 26 day long um, and every single day is different. So I'm going to give you a little bit of a deeper overview of what you can expect within, within that, those 26 days. So first and foremost, there are lectures, labs, workshops, and activities in areas of science, technology, engineering, arts, math, as well as business and leadership. So because you're on a university campus, we give you access to the university facilities and resources that can really enrich your learning. For example, an opportunity to actually go into the labs at the university and see the cutting edge research that those university professors and researchers are doing and actually do hands-on learning with them. At uh, SHAD UBC, which is the, the program I'm at every summer, we do a full day of science labs at the BC Children's Hospital. So we bring you in into a medical lab. You get to work alongside current and researchers 
and you get to do things like look through a $2 million microscope. So again, this is learning in a way that high school uh, and it's a very hands-on way and you're able to leverage resources and support uh, that a university can offer you. And this picture on uh, the right here is of uh, a shad student holding up a lobster uh, that was taking at one of our East Coast campuses where right there on the East Coast in the Atlantic, you know, there this university specializes in marine biology. So again, you get to cap, get the flavor of what that university has to offer and again, do hands-on uh, you might not have been able to experience otherwise. Beyond the university setting and the university labs and facilities, we we'll also take you into the city that that location is in. Uh, so you get to see what the local city has to offer in terms of career opportunities and professions. So for example, at the University of Waterloo, you'll be able, we're in Waterloo where there's a ton of you know, tech and entrepreneurs and tech startups, you'll be able to see and meet to go out in the community, in the, in the business community and meet these tech startup entrepreneurs and get to see what a, a really cool tech startup looks like up close in person. SHAD is also a unique opportunity to explore Canada in a way that you may not have seen. In addition to the workshops, the lectures, the labs and challenges from an academic perspective, there's also this piece to shed where you get to see Canada um, for its natural beauty attractions and local attractions uh, that Canada has to offer. So for example, again at UBC, the program I'm at each, at each summer, we take you to see the oceans, the mountains, uh, we take you on an eight kilometer hike up a mountain that when you summit it, you get to see this beautiful glacier fed lake. Uh, in, we we'll also take you to the beaches and the ocean that Vancouver has to offer. This photo here on the left was taken uh, from our Memorial University campus, which is in Newfoundland. Uh, they take us out to a place called Fogo Island, a beautiful spot off the coast of Newfoundland. Um, and you'll actually get to see icebergs in the middle of July. And so again, Chad is this incredible opportunity to explore Canada in a way and see a city in the side of Canada or province that you haven't ever been to before and really explore it for what it has to offer. One of the and cornerstones of the SHAD program that we hear time and time again was the best part of the program was the sense of community that gets built at SHAD. Uh, we, diversity and inclusion of our, our really our core values and we really promote that and we ensure that there's a place for everyone at SHAD. Um, a SHAD alone recently said that uh, when they went to shed it was the first time they were in a room full of leaders and the sense of community that was created where there was space for everyone to show up as all that as they as they could be as leaders was really profound and so every single day you're getting to build this community of student leaders from all across the country you'll meet students from newfoundland all the way to bc and build this tightly knit community with them many students on the last day say that when they leave shed um, they feel closer to the students and that they met at Shad than to students they have known their whole life back home. And so again, the friendships that you build at Shad are genuine, lifelong friendships. I can attest to that. I went to Shad when I was in grade 11, uh, and I still keep in touch with all of my Shad uh, people that I met at Shad. And even though I have eight years, anytime I travel across the country now, I have a place to stay because I can always uh, stop by at one of my fellow Shad's house and say hi. A big core part of the Shad experience is an entrepreneurship and design challenge. And so each year we give the Shad's a real world socioeconomic problem. And within your campus, you're split into teams of eight and told to solve this problem by coming up with a novel business idea or solution or service that solves that problem. And your deliverables are a working prototype, a fully written business plan, as well as a present to a panel of judges. And so what you get from this experience is number one, the hands-on engineering and design um, experience. And so we get to, you get what it takes to come up from, how do you think critically about a problem? And then how do you do go through the engineering design process to come up with a solution and then how do you prototype? So we'll bring you to do 3D printing, we'll bring you in to do programming workshops uh, so you can actually work with and, and create a working prototype. 
the flip side is that you also get entrepreneurship experience. And so we bring in entrepreneurs and business professionals to teach you how do you write a business plan? How do you commercialize an idea? And how do you make product or service actually come to life and bring to market? And so a lot of students come in saying that they never considered entrepreneurship an option before, but after SHED, they really found a passion and, and, and an interest in entrepreneurship. And of course, we give you all the tools to feel confident uh, to give a presentation pitch to a panel of judges, Dragon's Den style. And so you really get the full cycle of what it means and looks like to be an entrepreneur and innovative so business solutions to real world problems. So that's a little bit of an overview of what you'll do at SHED. In terms of uh, first and foremost, you're gonna meet like-minded students from all across Canada. So these are student leaders from all across the country, from Newfoundland to BC, all doing incredible things. And it's a really inspiring community to be a part of, for you to really see what leadership looks like uh, from a different city and to meet students from all across the country and then to, to hear all the incredible things that they're capable of. And it really leaves you feeling inspired and with the deeper understanding that youth are really capable of anything. You're also going to meet incredible program staff. Many of our staff members are current university students. So this is a chance for you, similar to FIRST Robotics, to get access to mentors and to meet university students from all different backgrounds. You have an opportunity to pick their brains on different university programs, ask them about their university scholarships that they've applied to, internships that they've had, and they, they can become really great mentors that you continue to stay in touch with even beyond the program. You'll have access to university professors and faculty members, all doing all who are renowned and doing research in their own areas and fields of expertise, engineers, business professionals, and entrepreneurs. Many of these professionals that we bring in are SHAD alumni themselves, and they're always willing to help out, uh, give back to the program, share their life experiences, their career backgrounds, um, and, to, and to give you access to uh, different opportunities that come their way as well. For example, one of our SHAD alumni that speaks each year at the McMaster campus is Darlene Lim. She is a NASA researcher, and so her, area of expertise is literally rocket science and she works on her work is around the mission to Mars so how do we send humans to Mars uh, that's what comes in every year gives a talk on her area of research and then also sits down to have lunch with the shads as well many shads have come up to me afterwards or years later saying that they are held uh, speakers that came to their shad program and eventually got internships with them uh, years after their chat experience. So this is, again, ways to get out a wide network of different professionals that can benefit you f further down the road in the future. SHAD is more than just a one month summer program, it's actually a network for life. The alumni community of SHAD is tightly knit and it, composed, it is composed of over 16,000 like-minded change makers from all across the country. And so this is an opportunity for you to gain access to a wide variety of professionals, upper year university students um, who can help you out in any way that you might need in the future. I've had a lot of SHADs who are in their grade 12 year and they jump onto our alumni network and ask a question about university admissions or university programs and scholarships. And without fail, there's always someone willing to answer their question to say, hey, yep, yeah, I'm university now I'm happy to answer your question or hey here's my advice from uh, my experience applying to this scholarship so it's a really unique way to get connections that expand your network and, can, and have that network for the rest of your life and to be a part of this really powerful network so this is our 16 university campuses so if you are selected to go to shad on July 1st, 2018, you could be on a plane, train, or automobile out to one of these 16 campuses. How our campus selection works is that once you are accepted into the SHAD program, you are given with your offer package a list of all of these 16 universities. 
and then uh, you are asked to rank these universities as your A, B, or C choice. And so we'll try to place you in your preferences and students who are accepted that are from the same school don't go to the same campus as best as we can. And we also make sure that you aren't in your home university. So for if you live in Waterloo, you won't be going to the University of Waterloo for your chat experience. We always make sure you go outside of your home area to help you really grow and get the most uh, that's in a city that you've never been to and that you wouldn't otherwise have a reason to visit. Uh, and so i uh, look for which of these campuses would you never otherwise have a reason to ever visit or live there. And this could be your reason to really explore a different part of Canada that you uh, wouldn't have seen otherwise. So are you a potential shad? Um, we, we know that students who are involved in FIRST exhibit a lot of the qualities that we look for and which is why we love and value this partnership and we encourage all FIRST robotic students to apply to the program. And so what we look for, it is a competitive application process. Not all those who apply to SHAD will get in, but we do look for three main characteristics, which is curiosity, creativity, and change makers. So the three C's there. What do we mean by that? In terms of curiosity, we look for students who have a desire to learn and a love for learning. Um, so you love learning for the sake of learning, you're curious and you're inquisitive. In terms of creativity, we're looking for students who are innovative, solve interesting problems. Um, and so you can demonstrate your creativity to us in a variety of ways um, through your extracurriculars, uh, such as FIRST, um, and any other times in your life where you really looked at a problem differently and really innovated uh, in a way that other people wouldn't have. And lastly, and most importantly, we're looking for change makers. This is youth who want to pursue their full potential to make an impact on the communities that they're a part of. And so we're looking for well-rounded students who want to step up as leaders and bring about real positive change. So curiosity, creativity, and change makers. And so we, say, we always say that SHAD is not just for the most local student leaders or those with the highest average. We're looking for students who love learning for the sake of learning and who want to bring out a positive impact on the world around them. Because so this is really exciting. We have a Shad First Robotics Scholarship that anyone that's currently in FIRST is automatically eligible for once they apply to Shad. And so uh, on the Shad application, you there is a checkbox that says, "Are you a part of FRC or are you a part of FIRST?" Um, as soon as you check that, um, and you submit your full Shad application, you are automatically automatically considered uh, for a full ride scholarship to attend SHAD. Uh, and so I believe Kim uh, from Glen Forest, Griffin, FRC Griffin machine, uh, is here on the webinar, uh, but she was our inaugural winner of the SHAD first scholarship this past year. And so she got a full ride scholarship to attend SHAD. Um, and as you can see up here on the, uh, she said that SHAD is a place for any student who is curious, passionate, and willing to learn. Which makes it perfect. Which makes it perfect for anyone in first. So, I you all to apply to Shad because you are eligible for for a full ride scholarship. And if you would like to learn more about Kim's uh, experience at Shad and Kim's experience as a first robotics competitor, uh, you can go on to the first blog and and read about her experience there. The application for Shad 2018 is due by November 20th, though. So it's not a lot of time, but still definitely enough time to put in a solid and strong application. So in order to apply to go to SHAD 2018, you have to apply by November 20th. And that's found on our website at shad.ca slash apply. Within the application, it is a lengthy application and it is a competitive application, like I said. So we always encourage you to put your best foot forward and put a considerable amount of time into it. We ask for... Uh, your list of extracurriculars, a transcript, as well as three short essay questions, and an academic reference from a teacher or guidance counselor. So it's a lot to fill out, but definitely still tons of time left between now and November 20th to put in a solid application. And like
and filling out your SHAD application, make sure you check off that you're an FRC student and you'll automatically be considered for a full scholarship to attend. Regardless of whether or not you are chosen as the FRC, the SHAD FRC scholarship winner, we also have bursaries available for those with proven financial need. So though there is a cost to attend, we always say that never let the program fee be the reason you don't apply to SHAD. Because as long as you are accepted into the program, we work with you to ensure that you have access to the necessary bursary funding available that you need in order to make this program accessible. So regardless of whether or not you win the first robotic scholarship to go to SHAD, if you have financial need, we'll make sure you have access to the bursary funding in order to make this accessible to you. So never let the cost of the program be the reason you don't apply. And lastly, why should you go to SHED? In addition to all the incredible things that I just said, uh, there's uh, two other additional main uh, advantages for going through the SHED program. Number one, you become a SHED fellow for life. The, the SHAD Fellow designation is recognized by universities as well as scholarship providers. So almost all major universities have said to us, we recognize SHAD as a mark of excellence and we really value being able to um, admit SHADs into our universities. So putting SHAD on your university application is a huge leg up and huge advantage. We've also heard that many scholarship providers across Canada, in terms of the major scholarship providers, like the eighty to one hundred thousand dollars scholarship providers, are they shed again as a mark of excellence? And many of our alumni who have won these scholarships said that when they talked about shed and their, their shed experience in their interviews, it held a lot of weight for them. Um, so, lastly, key dates to remember: November twentieth is our application deadline. In February is when our offers are released. And then July 1st to July 27th is our program this year. These are our social media channels for you to learn more, uh, but shag.ca is our website and that's where you will find everything. Um, and if you wanna check out our blog, including the blog that Kim, our first robotics uh, scholarship winner from last year and her experience, you can find that at shag.ca slash blog. That's all from me. Uh, I am the Shad Outreach Coordinator. My email is here, just at shad.ca. So if any of you have any questions, you are more than welcome uh, to email me anytime about the application, about the program, um, if you have any questions about the application process. Uh, but I do sincerely hope that I'll see all of you applying this year um, and that, uh, that we see a lot of strong candidates. For, I'm confident that we'll see a lot of strong candidates uh, from the first robotics network here applying to SHAD. So thank you guys so much. Thank you, Jess. That's fantastic. Um, and if there are any questions, please put them in the uh, in the questions chat box and uh, Jess will stay on the call until the end. Um, just one question that I received from a student was, um, they were curious to know, you know, what really stands out in the essay questions that you can think of? Any sort of hints or tips that you could uh, let us in on? Absolutely. That's a fantastic question. Uh, so when you're writing your essay answers, I'd say the a key characteristics we look for in the writing is awareness and maturity. So we're looking for students who are incredibly self-aware that can really explain their experiences in a way that demonstrates to us uh, what they've learned about themselves, about leadership, and then what they took away from the experience. So it's less so about you know, what you did, but more so about what you learned and what you can demonstrate to us about you as an individual and you as a leader and change maker from that experience. Um, so we look for self-awareness. And again, in terms of the three main characteristics we're looking for is, are you someone who's a change maker? You want to build and contribute to your community positively? And are you inquisitive and curious in terms of you love learning for the sake of learning? Great. And, um, and as Jess mentioned, there's a great blog post there that we've just put up and, and now a video as well uh, about Kim's experience. Um, so definitely check that out. And, and Jess, thanks so much for taking the time to be on here today. 
Um, so we'll just move on. Um, I'm going to talk a little bit about the a new badge program that we've just launched, um, and it's called the Equity, Diversity, and Inclusivity um, Badge Program. And this is actually for mentors. And um, First Headquarters has launched uh, a new uh, EDI, and that stands for what, what's on the screen, Equity, Diversity, and Inclusivity, a new EDI um, resource video package, really. And so these are video tutorials about how um, we can uh, educate and work together as a team to make sure that we are being um, inclusive and equitable and um, and, uh, and including everyone um, as far as diversity. So if you take, if the mentors um, take the uh, the training at the at the resource library and the links on there. Um, at the end of the training modules, they will get a certificate and uh, which they will send to First Canada, and you will um, get the mentors will get the the new badge, which is super exciting. And so at each FRC event in um starting next year um there'll be a badge pickup there and you can find out more uh, about the badges there and we'll we'll have um some more information on our website about this and of course e even though this is uh for mentors our, the hope is that um of course mentors will share the information with the students and we'll start open conversations about edi and um how we can make sure that uh, teams are incorporating it. So that's super exciting for us. Another big announcement is, um, so each of these webinars that we're doing, we are um, giving out some swag and we just got some brand new swag in and uh, Paul Keenan has done a great job sourcing out some um, swag. So we've got, white toques we've got these new um first canada caps new bronze first canada ball cap so we are giving away one of each of those today and um so those who email there, so that's Paul's email, p keenan at firstinspires.org. So what you have to do is eat, you've all watched the, uh, the power up, uh, video, uh, teaser on, on the game about the game. So I want you to, uh, to describe in three words how you feel about the, uh, the game teaser. And you need to email those three words to Paul, so P. Keenan at firstinspires.org, and he will um, randomly choose winners. One person will get the white toque, and one will get the uh, new bronze First Canada ball cap. So that's exciting. So please... Um, Start your emails. Get get creative on those descriptive words. Tell us what you feel about the uh, the game teaser. Okay, and then another big announcement is uh, Studica, who's one of our our partners, and uh, they have agreed to sponsor uh, these Ask the Expert webinars. And so Derek Murphy from Studica is going to appear as a frequent expert guest. And we will be giving out um, other sweat, other giveaways, a webinar prize from Studica on every webinar. So that's that's pretty exciting as well. And that won't be a first swag. That will be uh, like Andy Marcus type of things. So you know, it's worth tuning into these webinars and it's worth telling all your friends, your teammates, get on these webinars, see what you can win, right? Um, and Derek is has got a wealth of knowledge of um, lots of lots of stuff you might want to tap his brain as well. So he will welcome him next week onto our, our webinar. 
And uh, coming up on our next few webinars is uh, Monique Pouquet from FRC Team 6331. She'll be on next uh, time's webinar. And then uh, John Hobbins, which I know most of you uh, know him. And of course, he's the regional director of FRC in Ontario. So they will be um, on the next webinar. And now I can open it up to questions. Any any questions about what Jess talked about um, today? Remember, just type in your question uh, in the chat box, and I'll just give you a minute or so. Um, and and let's see. Okay, so we'll go back. Yeah. So so far, no question. Oh, somebody asked me um, the other day about how do we choose um, our swag and colors? And um, so Paul Paul basically does uh, surveys and he probably has asked many of you at events, um, what sort of swag would, we, would you like to see? You know, he um, surveys our favorite colors and that sort of thing. So that's where we're at on the, on the swag. Lots of good stuff that you'll be able to check out at the FRC events as well. So it doesn't look like there's any questions. So we're going to close up for today. Uh, remember to email Paul those three descriptive words for a chance to win the swag. And uh, thank you so much for, for joining us on the Ask the Expert uh, webinar today. So we'll see you, we'll see you next time. There's a question there that just came in. Oh, oh, there's a question. Here we go. Just a minute. Uh, oh, good. Oh, how competitive are the applications for Shad? Jess, if you're still there. Yes, I am still here. Okay. Uh, so the, it is a competitive process, but I will say uh, don't let that stop you from applying. So to give you um, a reference point, last year we had 700 spots available and we had just under 2,000 applications. So this year we have 900 spots available because we opened up from 13 to 16 campuses and we're on track to hit about uh, a little over 2,000 applications again. So probably closer to 2,200 or 2,500 applications this year. Wow. And so is that yeah. a panel of, of judges that reviews all of the applications? That's correct. Yeah, we have a, a big group of evaluators that read through every single one of the applications. Uh, so there, it's a lengthy process, um, but uh, we, we make sure every application gets uh, gets to evaluators. Okay. Okay. And uh, another uh, question, um, should you bother to apply if you have a learning accommodation? Uh, Yes, uh, yes, you should. Uh, we truly believe in inclusion. And so regardless of um, any kind of challenges you have, as long as you want this opportunity, you're willing to learn and you want to put in the work to be there, we will make accommodations for you. Uh, you can check out our blog for, um, you know, some really great uh, experiences of students who have come in. Um, you know, this isn't uh, had a really great student and blog post uh, earlier this month from a student who attended at Shad Memorial. Um, and she talks about how uh, she's actually um, basically completely blind uh, or almost blind. She's uh, she has a sight impairment, um, but she was able to make it work for, at Shad. You know, she took she would take photos of the, the lecture slides and then zoom into them on her phone and that's how she stayed in touch with lectures. And then of course her SHAD community and the SHAD staff were more than accommodating to make sure that she was able to do every single one of the activities, even the hands-on activities. Um, and, and we made it work for her. And so again, we believe in diversity and inclusion. We don't think anything should stop a student from going to SHAD. As long as they are, you know, they meet our minimum threshold and they want to be there and they uh, they have all the qualities that we, we look for in chat students. Okay, and that leads us to our next question about how important are marks slash achievements? 
Really great question, guys. <laughs> uh, and so I would say it's less so about your marks and more so about uh, your love for learning as well as your extracurricular activities and your demonstrated um, impact that you've made or desire to create an impact in your community. And so we always say it's more than just marks and more than just your transcript. We want to know who you are as a genuine individual and as a leader. Um, and so the marks are the, the least um, weighted thing in our evaluation process. We don't look at them quite as heavily as we do the essays and everything else around outside the transcript. Okay, great. And I just got another question by text. I mean, people are interested. Is it the same challenge at all SHAG campuses? Yes, it is. So each year we come up with a different theme and challenge. And so every campus works on the same theme or challenge for that year. Uh, so again, if you want to go onto our website, SHAG.ca, there's a recap of this past year's theme. And you can also take a look at the winners uh, from this past year because uh, yes, they're all working on the the same challenge in terms of creating a business plan prototype, but then the campuses compete amongst each other uh, within that as well. And so you can see the this year's winner. Uh, for the first time in history, we had one campus win all the categories, <laughs> all uh, or four categories in terms of best business plan, prototype, fit to theme, uh, and, and scientific use of scientific principles. So you can check our website for that as well. Okay, great. Um, that's wonderful. And so the next date, as you had said, Jess, it's November 20th, um, you had said, right? That is correct. November 20th is your deadline to apply. Okay, great. Um, just another question came through that, um, just a, one in general, how can I access this recorded webinar in the future? A uh, great question. Um, so Paul Keenan, he will post the link on Facebook. So it's available on our First Canada Facebook. Um, so you can check it out. Uh, should be there tomorrow anyway. Um, you'll be able to access it and, and listen to it at that point. So some great, great questions there. And uh, Jess, thanks for taking the time to answer all of them. Um, so I think we've answered all of those, so we're good. So, um, uh, yeah, okay. So we'll, we'll close off for today. And, uh, again, thanks so much for joining us and we'll see you next time, um, with Monique and, and John as the, as the guests. So thank you. Thanks so much. Thank you.